Right, now I'm delighted to say the uh, manager of the Antrim footballers, Enda McGinley, is with us. Enda, how are you getting on? I'm good, I'm good. The uh, the Owl lads doing well, that's something that's resonating with all Antrim football fans as you've had uh, two sensational points kicked by uh, Paddy Cunningham over the last couple of weeks. The outside of the left boot has never looked so good. Absolutely, well it was it, it was his instep that pulled it out of the bag uh, last week, but absolutely he has a wand of a left foot that's been known for a long time and it's still producing a good, so certainly we're thankful for it. Now obviously he's... He'll be he'll be tough to listen to for a wee while, but uh, I'll I'll certainly take that. How's it been going for you so far? What what's the what has been the the thing that you've learned most over the very short period of time that you've been able to work with the players? Uh, some questions, yeah. How, how much have you learned? Like it's it has been completely eye opening, and obviously I would have been about them type of setups quite a bit during my own career. But when when you're the man in charge, there there is just so much to cover. Uh, and obviously, given the, the COVID scenario and the constant readjustment of calendars that we were facing, I think I, I threw out about six or seven different organised calendars where everything plotted out towards first league games, but the, 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 the goalposts kept moving. So the, the, the biggest thing has been that you just have to remain, you, you remain adaptable. And your, your plans, both for the teams and for the organisation of the teams, is, has been continually thrown up in the air. Then when you've got back to training, you've lost players with niggles and injuries and with the games being so tight, uh, a, a simple injury will keep a fella out for, for two, three games now. So you have to completely change up your team around that. So uh, the biggest thing has just been to, to be adaptable, but just to keep pushing on. You, you have to accept every team is facing these sort of scenarios. Uh, but it, it has certainly been a, been a challenge in a few months. Has it been as enjoyable as you hoped it would be? <laughs> The, 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 the treasurer was asking me that. Uh, the county board and fairness have, have, been, have been great. And one of the questions was, well, where are you enjoying it? And there was a long pause <laughs> <laughs> in response to it. Uh, I love, love the coaching side of it, love working with the boys. They're, they're a great bunch and they're, they're really, really engaged. Like they're, they're phenomenal in that way and they are giving it everything. I love the management team and the backroom team that I'm working with. That's all brilliant. County board has been great. I love the training sessions, being back in a team environment, all of that's brilliant. Like that's that's what we're all used to. Anybody that's played in team sports and there is just something special being back involved in it again. Uh, standing on the sideline, watching games, being completely or feeling completely responsible for any mistake or any problem out there is uh, is one that I'm still getting used to and needing to try and keep in perspective. Uh, the, the games are tense and we certainly haven't made it easy for us. I think we've had four penalties against us, three of which weren't in the box, which is which is a, a difficult thing to start getting the head around. But uh, those, those are the challenges of, of the new game, I suppose. Feeling responsible for the mistakes made on the pitch. It's, it's interesting that, that you feel that. I, I guess that's one of the things that a lot of coaches talk about is putting the responsibility on the players. And, and that's kind of like a, a two-way street that they will take the, the responsibility in a positive way and then also in a negative way it is their responsibility of if little errors pop up here and there. Yeah, it's strange and it's it's probably just a, a mental thing. You, you you take it on yourself and it's probably not really the case, but I suppose publicly you are very much the face of it. And I read Park Joyce's comments about that, that he felt completely responsible for the performance against Kerry, yet uh, both in his time and in time as a player, you're, you're never thinking that the manager is in some way responsible for your performance level. Uh, so, I think for managers, it's always a difficult one. The, the, the buck does stop with you. So, if a player arrives not motivated or not willing to put it absolutely all in, is, is that the manager's responsibility or the player? You, 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 can, you can argue that all day, but a huge amount for me always comes down to the players. And particularly in a year like this, when, when there's been so little time in terms of preparation, like Anthony's got off to a good start. That's the players more than more than us as a management. Like you, you can only change so much in, in several weeks. So their their results are theirs. But as a manager, you, you you do take that responsibility. Even how the backroom team works, even how timings work, how everything works, you feel completely responsible. And if anything's going wrong, you know that you're 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 the person that's going to be critiqued. Uh, and that does add to the pressure and take a wee bit of getting used to it. But again, I think that thing of perspective. I'm trying to keep that. I think that that's a big learning process, and certainly it's something I know I need to I need to get better at uh, because I'm allowing it uh, to have too much of an impact at the minute when things are going well. So what it'll be like when things are going badly, I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that that sense of ultimate responsibility for everything, even like if a fella's missing a 21-yard shot, 
you, you still somehow feel responsible for that when, when of course you just can't. So, so how are you going to, to, to kind of not, not address that, but, but kind of, I guess, assess that over the next little while? Is there going to be a bit of your own psychology that's going to come into play there or, or what's the plan? Yeah, absolutely. Like I suppose we, we, we never describe these things as sports psychology or mindfulness or all of these other modern terms, but but without a doubt that's there. And, and certain personalities, like everybody's got different personalities, and some managers it'll not it'll not touch you at all, and other people it, it will be there. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's something you you acknowledge and and you take on board and you address. You use the management team that's around you to to help with that as well and to keep perspective. And I've been very lucky the group of boys I have around me are, are brilliant uh, so it's it's accepting that and, and passing more responsibility on to the players I think a lot of the, the attributes of the modern game how it's it's in some ways so technical now and there's a lot of things about processes and a lot of things about uh, plans and moves and whatnot it has become a wee bit easier for me for the modern player that if something's not working that it's a sideline issue Whereas for me and the top teams still do this, the top teams of them, if if something is not working, they'll they'll sort it out themselves on the pitch. They'll correct it. Like Dublin, of course, are, are the team at the minute and actually showed down some boys a, a clip from the start of the year from it was a semi final or an or, all Ireland final, one of the Mayo games a few years ago where Dublin lost maybe three, four kickouts in a row. But they didn't panic. They didn't start uh, collapsing in on themselves. They just sorted it itself out. They, they just got a simple kick out away and away they went. Uh, and big teams do that. They weren't looking at the sideline thinking, oh, we haven't worked on our kickouts enough. So it's that sort of mental strength that's absolutely key and come down the last 10, 15 minutes of games. It's that mental strength that teams, you can't be looking to the sideline. Uh, the teams and the players have to realise it's just a game of football and to, to forget about all of that other technical stuff and just figure it out on the pitch. And I suppose that's, for me, a big part of management is about giving them the tools and the confidence that they're ultimately responsible on the pitch for decisions and for spotting stuff and trying to adapt. We, we have a lot of work to do behind the scenes to develop them skills and to give them the confidence to do that because a lot of the time we've been spoon feeding them for several years now when the game did really change in a tactical sense. Uh, and with that, I think we, we lost the ability of players to just see stuff on the pitch and go at it rather than looking at the sideline and blaming the sideline. So uh, that's not me absolving myself of responsibility, uh, but they, they have to have the tools to be able to adapt on the pitch because the game is just too fluid now. Uh, there's too much happening. Uh, and so they have to be able to adapt and play the game as they see it and remain confident in themselves to deal with whatever's happening. That's really interesting because it has to inform every part of training then. You're, you're asking players to train decision making and at the same time to understand the tactical nuances of, of how a game is evolving. So that's very kind of core fundamental stuff while at the same time you have to work on the, the technical skills of the game too. So it's a, it's a big L job and that means your limited amount of training time and contact hours with the players becomes very intense. Yeah, absolutely. Like for you, you get asked so often by, by a player, right, if I'm standing here in the pitch and they have lost the ball, where, where do you want me to go? And I, I, I just, I suppose from my own playing career and for where we come, I just find that to be almost a crazy situation because, well, the, the player in the pitch, see, see what you need to do. You're an intelligent player, you're a county level footballer. Look at the pitch, see what scenario you're facing. There could be multiple different scenarios. There could be a thing that we don't have cover back. So, right, well, that's the most dangerous place, so that has to be covered. Or you might see that their main danger man is hanging back in a wee pocket just off to the side of play, in which case, if you've spotted that, you need to make sure that he's covered because that's the most dangerous. So me giving him a, regim a, a, a regimented sort of instruction, I want you always to be in position X, that's, that's great for him because he can run to position X, and if it doesn't work out, he can say, well, I was in position X, that's the manager's fault. But I think a team... And, and people sort of look at Dublin and think they're so tactically, they're so tactically astute and they're so uh, well drilled. I personally don't see that. I see a team of hugely intelligent footballers that are playing the game a lot of what they see. It they have a general framework and they have general principles at play in their heads. But they are intelligent footballers, talented footballers, obviously playing the game as, as they see it. And I think giving modern players back and and that's a big step. Then that's a brave step. So they always have to be looking at the game that they're playing. And then adapting but if they develop them skills 
then there's a great freedom within that and there's a great sense when whenever they're doing it right and they're really talking and they're communicating and they're doing this on the pitch that becomes a brilliant level of football and that, that's the type of football certainly i love uh, and it takes intelligent footballers to play it but if, if you're at county level you just don't want to be running about and just running to position a or position b and you're you're not just an athlete like you're you're a footballer first and foremost uh, so that's I'm, I'm loving working with the team in, in that regard and certainly the, the coaching team I have with that regard, but you will make many more mistakes than, than you'll get right, particularly in, in this early season. Uh, but it's a brilliant opportunity to be working at a level in the game where you have players that you can really work work with them type of principles with. Well, that's what I was going to say. It, it, it must be very tempting for new managers coming in in your scenario to say, right, what we're going to do is we're going to batten down the hatches and we're going to be super defensive and teams are going to score 11 to 14 points against us. We might score 5 to 8 against them, but no one's going to blow us out. Whereas what you're asking the players to do is to take the risk, make the run, take individual responsibility, and sometimes it'll be confusing and sometimes they'll make the wrong decision and that might result in shipping big scores, but it might also result in your forwards having a sense of freedom to try things and for your defenders to join in. So. It's um, it is the difference between Catanaccio and total football, really. Yeah, and it, it's a balance that uh, I'm continually trying to adapt because we, we've become so used to really packed defenses and really safe-looking defenses. So as soon as teams start to open up a wee bit, you can feel really, really exposed. Which actually, whenever you look at it in the cold light of day, you're actually matching up in a way that would have been very familiar to us maybe 15, 20 years ago. And it's not overly exposed, it's, it's still okay as long as boys are working very hard and trying to put pressure on the passes in and the pressure on defenders and maybe trying to get a wee bit of additional cover there. But because it feels more open than what we've been used to, the players on the pitch feel exposed. And the, the game, I think, is, is has really changed a lot over the past year or two. And suddenly defenders, there's more space in front of them. Uh, and it is a wee bit uh, much more exposed than what they've been used to. Is is that the right gamble to take? I don't know. Like we we conceded, we conceded six goals over our first two games, so I'm I'm hardly one to be talking on that. But having looked at it again, like the mistakes that are there, that them them goals could have been prevented by better defensive play and better spotting of the danger, and maybe some refereeing decisions within that. But my my choice was right. Do we actually just batten down the hatches completely and and fall back and is that's still something we're going to chew the fat over this week, to be honest, because that is still a safe option. And I, the, the problem is those tactics are exceptionally, uh, they, they work really well. They are exceptionally effective. So people that argue against them aren't the ones standing on the sideline trying to get the results. There is an effectiveness to them the tactics, particularly at a level in the game where maybe there are plenty of mistakes, such as the lower divisions, like teams will give you turnovers. And then tactics work really effectively on turnover ball uh, against the likes of Dublin who make so few mistakes those tactics have been shown to be less effective but at most levels in the game including club level players will give turnovers the mistake the mistake in decision making or the mistakes in pass execution will be there in most levels of the game uh, uh, and outside the likes of Dublin and so those tactics work really well and unless there's rule changes to change against them I've, I don't foresee them Coming any less effective, so they'll always remain there as a choice. It's just, I suppose, I think most players do want to get playing a wee bit more football. I, I think they do want to be embracing a change, and if you can make that happen, I, I think they'll come with you. So, as I say, it's it's early days yet, but uh, there's still plenty of decisions to be made from our end in terms of our playing style. But uh, that's still on the table, so we say. Right. Well, let, this is really interesting because it feels like there's a battle for the soul of football going on at the moment, and it's particularly being led by the Division One North, where we're seeing shootouts and jinking inside forwards, getting a little bit of space. Uh, I, I'm always reminded of Brendan Devenny coming on and saying defenders can't defend anymore because they're never asked to defend one on one. There's always a spare man. There's always a sweeper or a second sweeper giving you help, and so that art of the game has diminished while at the same time the forwards are getting better because they've less and less space so uh, the the game is the games that we've seen in the league granted it's such a small sample size after such a long period of time where teams have been out have been really high scoring free flowing particularly in that northern section do you feel that this is not a true reflection of how those teams might play 
in the championship or is it a change that there's new managers like yourself who are like, you know, the players want to play more interesting football, they're going to be better players, the more fun they're having, we should try and move this thing on again. It's, as I suppose, <laughs> great question. Like, there's a few things to tease out with that. So one thing is the game changing, absolutely. And I would have said that the game was starting to change a couple of years ago. Uh, it's not going to change en masse, but there's certainly there was major, for me, there was major signs that there was change of foot. Just don't, please don't do one thing. Do not assign any of the good football that we're seeing at the minute to new rules, because that is the worst interpretation of facts on the ground that I could ever <laughs> imagine. Uh, the new rules are just a shocker from from my point of view but uh, in, in terms of is the game changing absolutely teams are going a wee bit more offensive a lot of uh, perhaps the kick out rule in fairness has probably changed things a wee bit the the work around kick outs which has been such a central part of the game over the last 10 15 years and the the thing of the high press now and teams pushing up it means teams are a wee bit more exposed at the back. The, so the soccer tactics of the sort of the gengen pressing or the high pressing has sort of come in more and that creates more space behind. As well as that, you've had teams working for several years now on becoming really effective attacking units, really intelligent attacking units going into blanket defences. So now whenever they're faced with more open defences, they are ripping them to shreds. And what I would have said for a lot of years, the intelligence and the skill level of the modern player is way above where it was when I was playing the game. Uh, and so when you give them players a wee bit of space, they are really making hay and it's it's fantastic to watch. It is not good to watch from, from the sideline. <laughs> you are uh, continually worried, uh, but certainly the game is in a real state of flux. It's, it's not in a balanced state at the minute. Uh, that's brilliant for those watching it. Uh, I was chatting to Funny, I was chatting, you mentioned Devaney, I was chatting to Brenton after the the weekend there and he was up the Donegal match and he said like he said mom and could have had seven goals if you know what I mean and he was speaking to Bonner after the match and he obviously got his got his county football bow under Bonner and he said the difference in him from his first stint in management to this stint in management has been massive and he says he met Bonner after the match and he thought he'd be very frustrated and he says actually Bonner just shrugged and says it's just mad mad game of football and he was very easy about it so there, I think there is a general change. We'll see a slightly truer slant whenever it comes to championship matches. But league position is now so important, including for them top teams. And in a really short section of a league where you have three, four games, there's none of them Ulster teams that are not going out trying to win those games. And if they thought winning those games would be better served by a full-on blanket approach, trust me, they'd be doing it now. It's, it's not a matter of not showing their hands. So I do think it is reflective of a change in football, not due to the rules, in my opinion. Uh, but the, the game's very, very open at the minute. Well, it must be a very exciting time to be cutting your teeth as an intercounty manager then, given that the, the, there is so much up for grabs. Yeah, exciting. Exciting is one word, uh, <laughs> Jim, again. It's, uh, you, you can choose lots of different adjectives for that. But uh, no, look, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I love thinking about the game and, and trying to tease them things out and trying to get that balance right. You, <laughs> To be honest, you just feel a massive sense of responsibility to those players because they they put in such a massive effort. And I suppose coming from the end of the game that I was lucky enough to be involved in, that that from the end of the game, the Division 3s, the Division 4s, that's sort of the, the illogical side of the game, if you know what I mean. That's where the, the effort that them lads are putting in doesn't appear to equate the rewards. If we frame the rewards in, in the manner certainly that I was aware of in terms of titles won and, and glories had, uh, because realistically those type of things aren't within reach now for them players and yet they're putting in as I noticed Mickey Hart was saying it about loud they're putting in the similar type of effort so as a manager you feel a huge sense of responsibility and loyalty to them boys that there is some sense of development and that they get good days on a football pitch and it, it's framing that in a sense of like the, the sense that them lads are playing for their families and their clubs is massive and maybe stronger there than it was that, that I sensed among the top teams. The, the sense that they're there just to do whatever they can to raise the level a wee bit. And that's a massively humbling thing for me. Uh, and, and again, you sense a real responsibility to give them lads everything that I personally can and hope that that in some way is good enough that you can create a good enough setup around them between myself and the rest of the management team. So uh, excitement, uh, absolutely I'm enjoying the challenge, but you, you 
I, I owe it to these boys in terms of the level that they're putting in to try and get the results. And we've got a couple of lucky ones so far. Uh, but but we've, we've now got a wee shot of promotion and I, I would just love for them to be able to get that because that's that's one wee step for them. And I think it's it's a step that deserved for a number of years and have been unlucky. Uh, and as a step we're, we're tantalising and close to now, but they know themselves that it, it's it's the same as our one point wins that we've had two to date of. The difference between getting close to the line and getting over the line is just massive. So, uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting time for me personally. Plenty of learning happening, uh, but it's it's all about the players again, and and hopefully they we can we can keep making the progress we've made to date. Well, listen, we wish you the very best of luck. It's always great to talk to you. Thanks a million. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Jared. Thanks. And again, Lee giving us some thoughts there about what life is like at the moment at the coal face, and also I think that's really interesting stuff about the Ulster Football Championship and the style of play that the game is generally espousing at the moment. If you've got a view, we'd love to hear it. You can drop a comment on the YouTube channel or of course you can uh, text us on uh, 0879 180 180. That's the WhatsApp number as well.